In order to speak English well and effectively, we need to know what goes into English speech. Every language manifests itself in two forms, the spoken form and the written form. The spoken form of English comprises certain linguistic features and certain non-linguistic features. The linguistic features include certain segmental features and some suprasegmental features. We'll see these features in these programs and we'll begin with the segmental features which include vowels and consonants. There are certain English vowels, we need to know what these are and there are certain English consonants. If somebody asks a simple question, how many vowels there are in English? A simple answer is five vowels. When we say five vowels, we are referring to the letters in the alphabet. The five vowel letters of English alphabet. A, E, I, O, U. But these five letters represent at least 20 different vowel sounds in English, which are very significant because these are meaning changing sounds. If you use one sound for the other, the meaning changes in English and therefore these are called phonemes. Phonemes simply means a meaning changing sound of a particular language. Now we need to know what these 20 different vowel phonemes of English are. One basic thing we have to note is a letter of English, whether a vowel or a consonant, may stand for more than one sound depending on the context. If you take the case of letter A, it can reflect or it can represent at least five different sounds in different positions in English. And we have to know the correct pronunciation by only going to the dictionary. For example, this dictionary, the Cambridge Dictionary of English Pronunciation. And this is a well-known reference point to know the pronunciation of English. And when you turn the cover of this, you see on the very first page itself, at the back of the cover, the vowel phonemes and the consonant phonemes are mentioned here with phonetic symbols. So it's important for us to know what the phonetic symbol stands for, what sound it stands for, get to know them. And when we have a doubt about pronouncing a particular word, we have to look up the dictionary and get the pronunciation right. If we take the case of the letter A, as we just now mentioned, and I said it reflects at least five different sounds in different position. Let's take this. This is the letter and we have in a word like apple, it reflects or it represents the sound a ah in apple. And in a word like all, a-l-l, all, we have the sound o, all. And then if you take another word like take, T-A-K-E, take, this letter represents the sound A, take. And in a word like ago, ago, a, uh, ago. In this word, this letter represents the sound a. Uh. And if you take another word, Ah, in a word like ask, the letter A represents ah sound. So you see the same letter representing ah, a, o, a, and a uh, in different words. We need to know that there is no one to one correspondence between letter and sound in English. There is no one-to-one -one correspondence between spelling and pronunciation in English. And this is one area where English language differs from Indian languages. 
In Indian languages, we speak more or less as we write, but English is not so. And that is the reason why we have to be very careful when we try to speak English. Now, what are the various vowel sounds or vowel phonemes of English? We have long vowels, we have short vowels, and we have diphthongs. We have to note that the length of the vowel can be differentiate the meaning in English. For example, if you take F-E-E-L, feel, and F-I-L-L, -L, fill, feel and fill. The difference between these two words is brought about just by shortening the length of the vowel. The first word has a long vowel, feel. The second word has a short vowel, fill. So the length of the vowel can change the meaning in English. We have to be very careful about that. Similarly, P-O-O-L, pool, and P-U-L-L, -L, pull. The first one has a long vowel, the second one has a short vowel. So vowel length is phonemic in English. Some Indian languages do not have this length as a meaning changing factor in those languages. But such people with the background of these languages like Bengali, Oriya and Assamese, if they speak English, they feel that the length doesn't matter and so they make the long vowel short and the short vowel long and confusion takes place. So we have to take care when to use a long vowel and the length has to be sustained and when you use a short vowel, the vowel has to be made short. And then we also differentiate the English vowel between the rounded vowels and the unrounded vowels. Some vowels in English like O, U, etc. These vowels are rounded vowels. In the production of these vowels, the lips are rounded. And so the rounded resonance is important for these words. On the other hand, we have unrounded vowels where the lips are not rounded, they are spread in vowels like E, A, A, etc. When we use a rounded vowel in a word, we have to make sure that the lips are rounded and then that word will get the real English flavor. Take for example the word A-L-L, -L, all. The vowel here is a rounded vowel, it's a long vowel, so all. If you don't round your lips for this, you end up saying all. It doesn't sound like English. It is not all, it is all. All of them came. I got a call, C-A-L-L, -L, call, not call. T-A-L-K, talk. I want to talk to you. It is not, I want to talk to you, talk. It's not talk, it is talk. I took a walk in the morning, W-A-L-K, walk. I took a walk in the morning. He's very tall. Oh, these are all rounded vowels and the rounded resonance is very important when you pronounce these words. And then apart from these long vowels and short vowels, rounded vowels and unrounded vowels, we also have a group of vowel phonemes which are known as diphthongs. A diphthong also is considered to be a long vowel. It's a combination of two vowel qualities in one. A diphthong like I, for example. When I say I, the pronoun I, you have initially a and finally e put together, it makes one phoneme and that is I and similarly A, and so on. So let us see what these vowel phonemes are one by one. All the 20 English vowel phonemes, which are meaning changing phonemes. And let us also look at their phonemic symbols, which are used in the dictionaries. The long vowels are E, for example. And these two dots indicate the length of the vowel, 
E, as we have in a word like see, feel, me, knee, and so on. And then we have another long vowel, which is ah, ah, as we have in a word like ask, father, park, and so on. Then we have a rounded vowel, which is long, o, as we have in a word like all, call, ball, and so on. And then we have another vowel, which is known as a central vowel. This is uh, uh, as we have in a word like s h i r t, shirt. Shirt. If you remove the consonants, you are left with the vowel uh, uh, shirt. Mercy. M e r c y. Mercy. Uh, that's the vowel. Journey. J o u r n e y. Journey. And so on. So we have this vowel, and then another long vowel in English is oo. Oo, as you have in cool, c o o l, cool, pool, tool, and so on. So these are the five long vowels of English. It is important to keep the length of the vowel when we say these, and particularly when these vowels occur word finally. The length has to be sustained. Let us see the short vowels of English. We have e, the vowel e, as you have in sit, pit, fit, etc. In the word city, in both syllables we have the short vowel e, and then we have a. As you have in pet, met, set, get, net, a. Then we have the vowel a, as you have in the word pat, cat, rat, mat, and so on. The vowel a, and then we have the vowel o, which is a rounded vowel. O, as you have in a word like hot, caught, lot. Short, and so on. Then we have a vowel which is u, as in put, p-u-t, put, and so on. And uh, could, and these words have uh, the vowel u. And then you have another vowel which is uh, known as schwa, which is a uh, uh, that is the vowel, short vowel. Uh, which occurs in unstressed syllables in English, a word as in ago, or a light, away. In these words, we have a word initially. It is not away, but it is a away. Very weak vowel, which occurs only in unstressed syllables. And then we have another short vowel, which is a. Ah. Is short but open. Ah, as we have in the word n u t nut, c u t cut, and so on. Nut, cut, but, and so on. So all these, that is the seven or short English vowels. If you substitute one for the other, the meaning changes in English. For example, instead of saying pit, if you say pet, the meaning changes. Instead of saying pet, if you say pat, the meaning changes. So that is why these are meaning changing sounds of English. We have eight diphthongs in English. We have to be careful about this because most Indian languages have only two diphthongs, but English has eight diphthongs which are meaning changing sounds let's see this first of all we have a diphthong which is a as you have in a word like say may take 
make a then we have I which we have in the pronoun I fight my die and so on I I is different from a pay if you say pi the meaning changes instead of saying day if you say die the meaning changes and then we have another diphthong which is oi oi in a word like boy b o y boy t o y toy c o i l coil and so on so this is oi instead of saying b u y by if you say boy the meaning changes and then we have a diphthong which is known as o o which you have in a word like n o no g o go s o so so that's the diphthong o and then we have ow ow which you have in a word like h o w how c o w cow b o w bow ow that's the diphthong and then we have a diphthong which is ear ear which you have in a word like h e r e here n e a r near f e a r fear ear that's the diphthong and then we have air air as in d a r e dare how dare to do the you do that c a r e care p a i r pair air that's the diphthong and finally we have uwa uwa as you have in a word like p o o r poor t o u r tour c u r e cure uwa that is the diphthong these are meaning changing sounds in english eight diphthongs and we have to pay attention to these because we do not have many of these in indian languages we have to acquire them in order to speak english well if you substitute one for the other then there may be a problem in people understanding your english so 20 different vowel phonemes used in different places in different contexts the important thing to keep in mind is the length has to be maintained for the long vowels and they have to be shortened when you use these vowels and the diphthongs have to be made clear when they occur in different positions some speakers have problems with certain diphthongs for example a is replaced by i some by some people and then ear aya uwa are realized as monophthongs by spe some people for instance instead of saying ear they say ear and instead of saying air they say air and instead of saying uwa they say ur i am poor they say and uh, i want to drink beer and so on but they have to be realized as diphthongs in this context the basic thing that we have to keep in mind is whenever we have a doubt about the pronunciation of a word or whenever we hear somebody pronouncing a word in a way which looks strange to us to find out whether he is right or wrong we have to go to the dictionary look up the dictionary see the pronunciation and find out what sounds are used there what vowels are used there and do you make it a part of your speech and that is how our speech becomes very effective we have to be careful about certain word endings which we use in english especially indian speakers go by the spelling and they try to reflect the letter 
when they pronounce that word. For instance, let's take words ending in A-G-E, a simple word like V-I-L-L-A-G-E. People go by the spelling and they say village. I'm going to my village. But here, the vowel which is reflected is E. Not A, but E. Village. Same is the case with luggage, baggage, marriage, courage, cabbage, and so on. All these words, it is ij, not age, but ij. Similarly, people go by the spelling in words ending in M-E-N-T. People go by the spelling and say meant. Actually, the vowel sound here is a uh, munt. Not meant, but munt. Predicament. Establishment. Management. See? Management. Not management, but management. Munt. And then words ending in N-E-S-S. Again, people go by the spelling and say ness. It is not ness, but it is nis. The vowel is e. Cleanliness, godliness, nis. So that's the vowel. We have to be very careful because spelling many times misleads us. There is no logic. It is not because in one place, the letter is used in one way. It doesn't follow that in another place also it should be used in the same way. Take, for example, these two words. The same letter in both the words, but the sounds are different. For example, in this word, the sound is u, put, put, u. But in this, it is a, cut. So here you say put. Here you say cut, the same letter reflecting two different sounds. And this is the arbitrary nature of the language. And as I said earlier, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between spelling and pronunciation in English. And we have to know, whenever we have a doubt, the only answer is to go to the dictionary and find out what it is. And then there are certain problems with certain linguistic communities in India. Telugu speakers, for instance, have a problem with I and A. They freely exchange them because in Telugu language, I or A, when you interchange them, it doesn't bring about a change in meaning at all. But in English, it does. In English, if you say this instead of this, the meaning changes. And that's why these speakers in a word like child with I, they realize it as child. And in a word like training with this vowel A, they realize it as training. So they, they interchange them freely, but we should know when to use what. And we should know that these two are meaning changing sounds in English. And then speakers of Bengali, Oriya, Assamese language and some Hindi speakers should maintain the vowel length. In a, when they say a word like city, you cannot realize it as city because that means something else. In a word like pity, they should say pity with two short vowels. You can't say it pity. What a pity? Because in their languages, the length doesn't matter at all. So that is where they have to be very careful about. And again, there, is, there are other groups of people Oi, they re realize it as oi. Malayalam speakers, for example, instead of boy, they say boy, and so on. Uh, so they have to take care of that. And again, again, Telugu speakers, instead of saying beer, they say beer. Instead of bear, they say bear. Instead of care, they say care. Instead of ua, they say ur, poor, tour, etc. But in such situations, the diphthong has to stand out and it has to be pronounced very clearly.
In this session, we have talked about the English vowels. And I said, mentioned earlier, English vowels constitute one ingredient of the segmental features of the spoken medium of English. In the next session, we'll be dealing with consonant phonemes. How many consonant sounds there are in English? And uh, how are they different from the consonants we are familiar with? And what are these consonants? And how we have to take care? That we will see in the next session.